everyone, it's Miss Chelsea at the Black Creek Library, and today we will be reading about berries. The first book for today is Molly of Denali, Berry Itchy Day. I'm super excited today because my family is going to pick Jack. That means blueberries in Gwich'in. We love to eat blueberries and we like to cook with them too. So we need lots of Jack. Ready to go, Molly? Asks my mom. Thanks for watching the store, she says to Tui. Happy to help, Tui says. Don't forget bug repellent. I grab the repellent off the counter. It will keep mosquitoes from biting us. When we arrive at the river, there are tons of mosquitoes. Let's get on the water, Dad says. They won't be so bad there. We jump in the canoe and start to paddle, but the mosquitoes follow us. Pass the bug repellent, says Dad. Dad sprays the repellent. That's odd. This smells like dog perfume, he says. That's what you spray on dogs when they roll in something stinky. Oops, I just sprayed my dog Suki with dog perfume this morning. I must have mixed up the bottles on the counter. We head to shore and make a fire. The smoke keeps the mosquitoes from biting us. The problem is, we can't pick Jack if we're stuck by the fire. We really need repellent. My grandmother used to make repellent from plants, but I don't know the recipe, says mom. Then I think of something. There's a book back at home that might have a recipe. I decide to call Tui, but first I have to climb a tree to get phone service. I ask Tui to find the book. I'll call you when I find the recipe, but here's an idea while you wait, he says. I heard the elephants cover their skin in mud to keep bugs off. We decide to try it. We take mud from the river and put it on our arms and faces, but the mosquitoes keep biting us. It's time to give up on the berries and head home, says Dad. Mom and I stay by the fire and Dad canoes back for the truck. Mom sees how disappointed I am. We'll try again another day, she says. Just then, Tui calls. Hey, I remember the elephants use mud to cool off, not for bugs, he says. No kidding, I say. While we're on the phone, Tui finds the recipe. We need four plants. Yarrow, stinkweed, marigold, and wild onion. Mom and I start to look for the plants we need. Tui sends a picture of the ingredients to my phone. We use the picture to make sure that we have the right plants. We put everything in a bucket. I take a video of us making the recipe. We squish up the plants. By sea plants, Mom says. That means thank you in Koyukon. Thank you for protecting us from mosquitoes, said Mom. After we squish the plants, we add a little water. Time to test it out, says Mom. I put the mixture on my arms and face. I stand with my arms wide. I wait to see if bugs will bite me. But I don't feel anything. I'm not being bitten. The recipe worked. Just then, Dad pulls up in the truck. It took so long to get the repellent that it's time to go home. We'll have to pick berries another time. But wait, I see something. There are blueberries right on the bush by the truck. I run over and pick a few. I picked just enough Jack to bake exactly one muffin. My parents and I decide to split it with Tui. Thanks for watching the store, says Mom. Let's eat, says Dad. 
And that was Molly of Denali, Very Itchy Day. The next book is Barry's Song. This is by Michaela Goad. A note to the forager. Please only gather berries and other wild foods that you and an experienced adult can identify beyond a doubt. There are many toxic lookalikes. Good old sheesh. Barry's Song. On an island at the edge of a wide, wild sea, Grandma shows me how to live on the land. Together we pull hemlock branches from the salty ocean, heavy with herring eggs like tiny stars. On the beach, we gather ribbons of slippery seaweed dancing in the tide. By the tumbling icy falls, we dip our nets for silvery salmon hidden beneath the current. And in the forest, we pick berries. Salmon berry, cloud berry, blueberry, nagoon berry, huckleberry, soap berry, strawberry, crowberry. The berries sing to us, glowing like little jewels. We sing to so berry and bear, know we are here. Grandma tells me we speak to the land as the land speaks to us. I say, huckleberry, soapberry, strawberry, crowberry, thimbleberry, swampberry, bogberry, chalkberry. The forest sings to us through misting rain and whoosh of wing, the sweet smell of cedar, and the tickle of moss. We sing too. So the land knows we are grateful. Grandma tells me when we take care of the land, as the land takes care of us, Gunoshish, I say, giving thanks. Thimbleberry, swampberry, bogberry, chalkberry. Liganberry, raspberry, bunchberry, cranberry. Our ancestors sing to us, their voices dancing on wind and water. We sing too, so they know that we'll always remember. And we sing for the future, so that all will hear and all will know this beautiful berry song. Grandma tells me, we are a part of the land. As the land is a part of us, I say. The ocean sings to us, rolling ashore like a beating drum. We sing too, so the tides know we are home. Together we make salmon berry syrup and cranberry marmalade until the kitchen glows like summer sky. We feast on huckleberry pie and strawberry crisp, raspberry scones, and freshly whipped soap berries. We share the gifts of blueberry jelly and nagoon berry jam. Gunal sheesh, we say, giving thanks. The nights grow long, edged in frost, as sea fades gently into sky. The forest is resting, the forest is dreaming, waiting for Barry's song. And so the seasons change. On an island at the edge of a wide, wild sea, I take my little sister's hand. Liganberry, raspberry, Bunchberry, cranberry, salmonberry, cloudberry, blueberry, and nagoonberry. I have so much to show you. And that was Barry's Song, a Cattle Cop Medalist by Michaela Goad. 
The last book for today is Blueberries for Sale by Robert McCloskey. Blueberries for Sale. One day, Little Sal went with her mother to Blueberry Hill to pick blueberries. Little Sal brought along her small tin pail and her mother brought her large tin pail to put berries in. We will take our berries home and can them, said her mother. Then we will have food for the winter. Little Sal picked three berries and dropped them in her little tin pail. Kaplink, kaplink, kaplink. She picked three more berries and ate them. Then she picked she picked more berries and dropped one in the pail. Kaplunk! And the rest she ate. Then little Sal ate all four blueberries out of her pail. Her mother walked slowly through the bushes, picking blueberries as she went and putting them in her pail. Little Sal struggled along behind, picking blueberries and eating every single one. Little Sal hurried ahead and dropped a blueberry in her mother's pail. It didn't sound kaplink because the bottom of the pail was already covered with berries. She reached down inside to get her berry back. Though she really didn't mean to, she pulled out a large handful because there were so many blueberries right up close to the one she had put in. Her mother stopped picking and said, now, Sal, you run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to take her berries home and can them for next winter. Her mother went back to her picking, but little Sal, because her feet were tired of standing and walking, sat down in the middle of a large clump of bushes and ate blueberries. On the other side of Blueberry Hill, Little Bear came with his mother to eat blueberries. Little bear, she said, eat lots of berries and grow big and fat. We must store up food for the long, cold winter. Little bear followed behind his mother as she walked slowly through the bushes eating berries. Little bear stopped now and then to eat berries. Then he had to hustle along to catch up. Because his feet were tired of hustling, he picked out a large clump of bushes and sat down right in the middle and ate blueberries. Over on the other side of the hill, little Sal ate all of the berries she could reach from where she was sitting. Then she started out to find her mother. She heard a noise from around a rock and thought, that is my mother walking along. But, it was a mother crow and her children, and they stopped eating berries and flew away saying, call, call, call. Then she heard another noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother and I will go right that way. But it was Little Bear's mother instead. She was trampling along, eating berries, and thinking about storing up food for the winter. Little Sal tramped right along behind. By this time, Little Bear had eaten all the berries he could reach without moving from his clump of bushes. Then he hustled off to catch up with his mother. He hunted and hunted, but his mother was nowhere to be seen. He heard a noise from over a stump and thought, that is my mother walking along. But it was a mother partridge and her children. They stopped eating berries and hurried away. Then he heard a noise in the bushes and thought, that is surely my mother. I will hustle that way. But it was little Sal's mother instead. She was walking along, picking berries and thinking about canning them for next winter. Little Bear hustled right along behind. Little Bear and little Sal's mother and little Sal and little Bear's mother were all mixed up with each other among the blueberries on Blueberry Hill. Little Bear's mother heard Sal walking along behind and thought it was Little Bear, and she said, 
Little bear, munch, munch, eat all you, gulp, can possibly hold, swallow. Little sow said no. She picked three berries and dropped them, complete, complaint, complaint, in her small tin pail. Little Bear's mother turned around to see what on earth could make such a noise like plunk. Grumph, she cried, choking on a mouthful of berries. This is not my child. Where is Little Bear? She took one good look and backed away. She was old enough to be shy of people, even a very small person like Little Sal. Then she turned around and walked off very fast to hunt for Little Bear. Little Sal's mother heard Little Bear trampling along behind and thought it was Little Sal. She kept right on picking and thinking about canning blueberries for next winter. Little Bear padded up and peeked into her pail. Of course, he only wanted to taste a few of what was inside, but there were so many and they were so close together that he tasted a tremendous mouthful by mistake. Now, Sal, said Little Sal's mother without turning around. You run along and pick your own berries. Mother wants to can these for next winter. Little Bear tasted another tremendous mouthful and almost filled the entire pail of blueberries. Little Sal's mother turned around and gasped. My goodness, you are not Little Sal. Where, oh, where is my child? Little Bear just sat munching and munching and swallowing and licking his lips. Little Sal's mother slowly backed away. She was old enough to be shy of bears, even very small bears like Little Bear. Then she turned and walked away quickly to look for Little Sal. She hadn't gone very far before she heard a kaplink, kaplink, kaplunk. She knew just what made that kind of noise. Little Bear's mother had not hunted very long before she heard a hustling sound that stopped now and then to munch and swallow. She knew just what made that kind of a noise. Little Bear and his mother went home down one side of Blueberry Hill, eating blueberries all the way and full of food stored up for next winter. And Little Sal and her mother went down the other side of Blueberry Hill picking berries all the way and drove home with food to can for next winter, a whole pail of blueberries and three more besides. And that was Blueberries for Sale, written by Robert McCloskey. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed listening to stories about berries. What is your favorite kind of berry? I think my favorite berry is a blackberry, but I also like blueberries and raspberries. Did you learn of any new berries in the berry songbook? See you later, alligator. So long, King Kong. In a while, crocodile. See you next time. Bye-bye.